I'm Foy Vance, a singer and songwriter from Northern Ireland. I've released three studio albums, which has allowed me to tour all over the world for the last 10 years. And recently between tours, I took the time to travel the States, to dig in and discover what makes these American cities amazing destinations. One place I really wanted to check out was Cleveland, Ohio. Many say it's the birthplace of rock and roll. Cleveland was one of the first places to play rock and roll on the radio, and that's one of the reasons why Cleveland is the home to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum. This museum displays tons of artifacts belonging to rock's legends, like Elvis, James Brown, and Janis Joplin. Some of the details were incredible to see. There's sweat rust on the strings of Freddie King's guitar. At every turn, my mind was blown. This is very surreal. The Hall of Fame alone is a great reason to visit Cleveland. But there's so much to experience here. Laura DeMarco, Cleveland historian and author, took me to see some of the city's most iconic spots. Cleveland is home to great food influenced by people from all over the world. And Laura took me to one place in Cleveland where you can find it all, the historic West Side Market. This is the West Side Market? Wow. Yeah. It's been in the market since it opened in 1912. Whenever people come to Addis this is one of the places I really like to show them. It just says so much about Cleveland. The West Side Market has just about everything you can imagine. Bacon lollipops? We have bacon lollipops, yes. <laughs> I don't know what to think of that. Bacon is the new craze. <laughs> There's so much to choose from in the market. But the must-try spot was one of the market's oldest stands. You want a bratwurst and you come to the market. 48 years we've been here. My parents came from Austria in 1962. And in Austria, they have many different types of sausages in the open air markets. So my dad decided he was going to try this here. My son is third generation, so it's all a family affair. Let's get it on. Let's Would you like to try one? I'd love to try one, yeah. This tastes great. So what did you think of the market? I loved it. Yeah. I love this area. I love the feel. Yeah. I love the community feel. Anywhere there's a market, there's always a community feel, don't you think? There is. Every bit of Cleveland is in there, really, yeah. from the old days until today. A cultural melting pot. What are we going to do after this? We could get a beer. Cleveland's oldest craft brewer is right behind us. It's called Great Lakes Brewing Company. Or we could get dessert. Cleveland's coolest ice cream shop is just around the bend. My gut's saying beer, but my heart says ice cream after, yeah. after a bratwurst. Yeah. You know they make ice cream with beer there. Let's go and get ice cream. Okay. Like everything else in Cleveland, Mitchell's did not disappoint. Amazing ice cream, incredibly inventive flavors made in partnership with local farmers and businesses. We have one ice cream flavor that's actually made from a neighboring brewery, Great Lakes I Brewing heard Company. About this. Yeah, that's the one I want to try. <laughs> that helped make yeah. the decision to come here. Yeah. Yeah. A porter chocolate chunk is the flavor that we make with their Edmund Fitzgerald Porter beer. They have some beer at the end of a run that doesn't make it into a bottle, so they wanted to get us that beer and then have us use that as an ingredient to make this ice cream. I could taste like heaven on a spoon. Mitchell's is a great part of the Ohio City community and is connected to its history. Something that I think is really neat about this space and this building, uh, when it was built in 1919, this was a live vaudeville style theater. Who would have imagined that almost 100 years later, the theater would be making ice cream? You like Willy Wonka? You ice cream? cream? Yeah. From Mitchell's, we headed across town and through the Little Italy area on our way to check out one of Cleveland's best independent rock clubs, the Grog Shop. people think of Cleveland like the rock hall that makes us a music city, but we were a music city before that. Oh, That's, definitely. Rock and roll was coined here. The first concert was here, thrown by Alan Freed. 1952, the Moondog Coronation Ball. In the 70s, we had this great radio station, WMMS, playing Bowie and Bruce Springsteen and Patti Smith. There was a lot of history, you know. I and mean, when we opened, I quickly learned that there were so many bands that needed a place to play. Now, you know, fast forward, there's a lot of small venues, but at the time, there really wasn't. So we were really a platform for younger people to just get out there and play. And fast forward 26 years, here we are. How many nights do you have live music in here? Um, usually seven. This is really the place people yeah. in Cleveland come for the up-and-coming bands. I feel like people get a really personal experience when they see a show here. They're always blown away when they see the band they love. They could be like this close to your favorite yeah. artist. I can see why we came to yeah. this venue. I stuck around to hang with the locals and check out that night's performance, Frankie Cosmos. Uh, uh, 
A long list of artists come to play here or check out the up and coming bands. The Whole Steady, Yeah Yeah Yeahs, Oasis, Flaming Lips. They've all played here at the Grog Shop. And on any given night, you don't know who you'll spot checking out young bands who are just getting started. From a huge menu of fantastic food to a rich history and interest in people, Cleveland has it all. Even the best in music, art and culture. It didn't take me long to understand what so many people in America already know. Cleveland rocks.